Desperate people do desperate things even when their intentions are innocent. Look, a couple of years ago, I was just a woman that wanted her family to eat real fresh food. You know, grown on a farm rather than the engineered pseudo foods that populate the interior aisles of most supermarkets. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a week's worth of made from scratch beat the clock dinners. Show you how to bulk buy and stock on a budget and show you how to create your own shelf stable foods using fresh ingredients that will last you for months or years. Now darling, I'm also gonna sprinkle in a little pantry track cause we've gotta catch up on some things. Home cook meals do not have to be a tiring, stressful, or expensive experience. So I'm gonna need you to uh, grab a cup of something and meet me over at the kitchen table so we can start planning, prepping, preserving, and serving your very own meals today. So first off, let's go shopping. What, my slippers confuse you? <laughs> I'm not talking about that grocery store. I'm talking about your grocery store. And by that, I mean poke around in your fridge, your freezer, and your cupboards to see what you already have that needs to get used up. It's a five minute task that will prevent you from buying multiples of what you already have, allow you to use what you already do before it expires, and truly allow you to rotate through your inventory. I use baskets like this so I can divide what I find and start to see the ingredients that I'll meal plan with. And yes, it's an obvious tip, but until you start doing it with fidelity, you're gonna be wasting so much money at the grocery store and time in the kitchen. Take a look at how I do it. Now you can go to the grocery store. Our budget is usually a 70, 30, eh, 60, 40 combination of what we're going to eat fresh and then what I'm putting away to either preserve or stockpile. Pulling from what I had on hand or needed to use up meant that all I picked up was some kefir, radishes, napa cabbage, green onions, lunch meat, some quinoa that I found on clearance, apples for snacking, a few tomatoes, squash to store, ginger, cheese, and canned milk, which I hadn't planned on getting but figured I'd get ahead of the holiday rush. Then y'all, I found these candles for $1.99 a piece, a price that I haven't seen in a year, so I grabbed a few, and lastly, I picked up a few green bell peppers. All right, darling, I'm gonna need you to strap in because I'm gonna take you through the week's dinners, lunches, and breakfast, and then after that, we're gonna do some candy with Rachel from that 1870s homestead, and then we're gonna do some fermenting and then a separate bulk food haul. Now, I remember a couple weeks ago when we made and canned the chicken and corn soup, which is like a staple ingredient because you can make so many recipes with it, and remember how I showed you how to turn this soup into a sauce? Well, honey, when I made that, I tucked some into the freezer because mm, it unthaws beautifully. And since I knew that I would be working late on Monday, that meal was a lifesaver. This chicken, bacon, and corn Alfredo pasta is always a hit. I sprinkled a few green onion slices from the garden on top, and dinner was done. Combed canned carrot and fennel soup with frozen sourdough was filling and fast. This next meal is my version of a French onion mushroom harvest bake. I had a couple of cans of mushroom that were canned in French onion broth, sandwich cheese that I needed to use up, and some pasta, so this meal just made sense. This dish turns out a bit different each time I make it, but it's still delicious. When I need a vegetarian option, the mushrooms really shine through, but it's also great with chicken, fish, or beef. Since I cooked this in my Dutch oven, I had enough to freeze for future meals and then place the rest in a container that would fit in the fridge for this week. Another time saver is to just assemble meals you can bake right in the container. I often take uncooked rice topped with frozen or canned fish or chicken, add my home canned orange slices to infuse a sweet citrus glaze, and then toss in some frozen veggies to unthaw. Then I'm just sticking it in the fridge. By the time I get home in the evening, I just add water and bake for dinner. Having ingredients already together in fridge baskets takes the thinking out of meal prep when you get home. Today we're having Mississippi pork roast that's already fully cooked in a dryer made when I caught a spring sale on pork. This recipe has savory ripened flavor from the ranch spices, a jus gravy, and spicy pepperoncinis. The reason I walked straight in the door and didn't even worry about changing my clothes is because the longest part of this recipe is going to be the potatoes. Um, so I just like to like pop them in the microwave after you put them in like di uh, diced pieces. It's probably going to be something around like 15 minutes. I just, you know, just play it by texture and feel. And so other than that, y'all, once I get these going and then I pop open, let me see if I can tilt you down here. Yeah, after I pop open, no, you still can't see me. Yeah, this Mississippi pork roast. Oh, I love that popping sound. Oh, it smells so good. You should be at my house tonight. Oh my goodness. I love this smell. I'm just gonna put this in here and then I'm going to transfer 
the green beans to this jar because it's microwave safe. And while those are finishing up, I'll heat up the green beans and then y'all dinner is done. All right, so while that's heating up, let me go change it to my house clothes. So this is my recipe that's not a recipe for mashed potatoes and I'm gonna go ahead and add the milk now and I just do like I don't know two or three tablespoons at a time if you get your potatoes tender enough like what I have here oh my gosh I mean they just they just melt like it's not even worth it to get out the blender you know what I mean and then I just I make them like this so often y'all that I kind of I mean it's just by look and feel like I'm adding some pepper here and now I'm gonna add some salt you know just to like I under salt and under pepper because you can always add more but most of the time I get it right um, not bragging just saying uh, <laughs> but I mean like look those are some gorgeous mashed potatoes. And I encourage you to leave the skins on. They're full of nutritional value, actually more than the actual potato. Um, and like you barely taste them because you still have all the goodness from the milk and the butter. And now like I can't imagine like why I ever used to throw them away. Um, all right, so let's get dinner plated. Come on, do I really need to tell you how much you and your family will love this dish? Now let's move on to lunch. But if we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm gonna help you start canning and preserving your own ingredients right at home and share ways to use your home camp pantry and meals your family will love. Now the lunches that I'm making that we pack for the work week is the same thing every day unless it's leftovers. Now I already had a few peppers in the fridge that I wanted to use up, which is why I only needed to buy a pack of peppers for our sandwiches this week. Yes, sandwiches. Take a look. Stuffed pepper sandwiches have become the unexpected lunch I didn't know we enjoyed so much. My dad's loosely been following keto, which gave us the push to try these. After you slice your pepper and remove the seeds and the innards, just fill with your regular sandwich fixings. This week I'm using guac as the spread, along with provolone cheese, tomatoes, and turkey lunch meat. By the way, save your lunch meat containers for to-go guest boxes. I've had this stainless steel stacking pail for five years and I love it. It doesn't retain smells or stains and the compartments fit nearly everything I can imagine. I'll use chickpeas setting aside the drained liquid to use as an egg substitute for some brownies I'll bake next week to make smoked barbecue baked chickpeas. These are the perfect crunchy and healthy substitute for chips because they give you that satisfying crunch and flavor without the guilt. You'll season them well with spices and a tad of salt and then bake them in the oven until they are crispy about 50 minutes. few dates so I added them to my lunch as a sweet treat. Out of the oven these smell amazing no one will ever suspect that you're baking beans and you can add a dipping sauce like ranch or blue cheese to really take things to the next level. go-to lunch if you're like me you have to like eat and work at the same time I love it because you get like the juiciness of the pepper so it's really hydrating but then you also have like the satiating flavors from the cheese and the turkey and tomato and then I use spicy guac and so and plus you can stuff these with like anything I've done um, onions before not today I'm headed off to several meetings so you know um, and then just like uh, what else have I done like capers and olives and sometimes I sprinkle these with herbs they're just these are so good. Mm. All right, so we made it to breakfast. And during the week, it is oatmeal every day. I just switch up the toppings. 
I have fallen into a delicious oatmeal rut because it is the only thing that will stick to my ribs and won't have me rummaging through my lunch by 10 o'clock. Y'all, I gave up on box cereal years ago because my husband and my dad will eat half the box in one sitting just to feel full. And cereal is not cheap. And especially now, and the boxes are shrinking. And I don't have time for meals that require too much assembly in the morning. Remember how I showed you how to make your own pie crust using sourdough discard? Well, this is yet another way that I love to use it to make a weekend breakfast special. Baked oatmeal pie is one of the many ways I keep oatmeal interesting. I'm making a banana brulee oatmeal pie that I keep in the fridge for over the week, but this is also hit when guests are over and I need something quick. All you do is prepare your oatmeal as normal and then you pour it into a baking dish, adding extra milk if needed. Now I had two very ripe bananas that I just sliced and then layered on top. Then I sprinkled brown sugar over the bananas and tossed with the remaining pecans that I had over the mix before placing in the oven to bake for 20 minutes. Honey, your house is gonna smell like banana bread when this comes out of the oven. This recipe proves that eating the basics doesn't have to be boring. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Paired with a cup of coffee, this feels like having dessert for breakfast. If you haven't given this a try, honey, what are you waiting for? Be sure to freeze those peels so you can use them later in the garden. Peels are a great source of potassium your plants will love. Bacon, egg, and cheese toaster scrambles are a cinch to make when you have pie crust on hand. You can finally avoid the unnecessary preservatives that are in the frozen store-bought options. The homemade version is always healthier, a larger portion, cheaper, and more delicious than what you'll find in the prepackaged food aisle, and y'all, they are so easy to make. Basically make a breakfast scramble and add the filling between two pre-cut pie slices. You bake them for 10 to 15 minutes or until golden brown. What comes out of the oven is a flaky, perfectly seasoned toaster made with real eggs and cheese with ingredients you can name. And make a few extra to freeze so that you can have some for busy mornings later on. All right, so now we're gonna move into this thing's canning project. And oh my goodness, canners, did you see Rachel's video on canning balsamic maple clays Brussels sprouts? Raise your hand if you lost your mind on that one. Oh my gosh, that video was sheer delight, right? From beginning to end. And yeah, so that's what I did this weekend. Is there any better way to eat Brussels sprouts than like balsamic maple glazed oh, Brussels sprouts. You're right, Rachel. No, there's not. So my head got spinning. Mm -hmm. Balsamic vinegar. Uh, yes, girl. Why can't I just pre-cook or pre-can my balsamic maple glazed Brussels sprouts? Love it. Love it. The Brussels sprouts at the farmer's market always look the best, so I picked some up and followed Rachel's recipe to a tee. Now, very honestly, whether I'm following another canner's recipe or my own, when I can, I so very much enjoy having other canning videos play in the background, just like this. I don't have anyone close to can with, but listening to others share their love of home canned foods makes the time that I spend in the kitchen seem like a shared experience with a friend. Now, I've never met Rachel in real life, but we've canned so many recipes together over the years. So friend, when the days are long or you're tired or feeling uninspired, find your tribe of folks that you enjoy watching and bring them into the kitchen with you. What I can say is that now that I'm meeting others that are becoming farm girls too, it truly makes meal prep and preserving even that much more special because it seems like it's just you in your kitchen when the truth is there are so many of us turning the routines of cooking into a semi-homemade form of art.
fermenting yet, honey, you've got to stick your toe in. It's the fastest way to preserve your veggies and your fruits because you just dunk them in a brine and bam, they're preserved. Plus, you probably have everything you need to get started. Last season, I shared a video on my favorite fall ferments. And now that squash, cabbage, and other root vegetables are back in season, I had to bring back my chipotle squash kraut and that kimchi that the folks that don't even like kimchi will love. It's unfortunate that canning and fermenting don't play a larger part in meal prep because it opens up a variety of nutritional options in a way that freezing alone can't. I guess that's just our secret for now. Let's start with a basic kimchi that's excellent as a springboard recipe for experimentation and those with daring palates. My goal is to make several gallons of this over the next few weeks, which will be enough to last us over the winter. Instead of saddling myself down with large quantities, I opt for small batch sessions like this and repeat the recipe several times over the next few weekends. This way my fresh ingredients don't go to waste and I don't burn out. The health benefits from probiotics cannot be denied, but buying fermented anything is expensive at the store and almost laughable to do when you realize how cheaply and quickly you can ferment your own foods at home. In upcoming meal prep videos, I'll share how we plan to use this, but if you need ideas now, the full fermentation video I've already posted gives you nine recipe ideas. <music> The simplicity of equipment you need to start fermenting keeps prep quick. I enjoy using weights and air release lids. All the products that you see me using are linked below. The second ferment I love to make is chipotle squash kraut, which produces a mild kraut that is not sour. The chipotle powder gives it an earthy, smoky spiciness, making it a perfect substitute for fresh tomato salsa in the winter. You'll love it over fish tacos or mixed into cheese dips and as a topping over rice bowls. It's a ferment that doesn't look or smell like one, so if you have picky eaters, this is one I recommend. As a farm girl in the making, I've started to use chicken feet and necks sourced from a local farmer to make small batches of bone broth, which are perfect for the fall season. Paired with veggie scraps, it ensures that nothing goes to waste. Now, other than BJ's or Costco, and maybe we could count Aldi, there aren't many discount grocers in my area, which is why I have to tell Leanne from Mennonite Farmhouse this. I have a plan that may involve me holding you hostage after the homesteading conference. Do you want to hear it? Sure. <laughs> I'm so glad you're up for it. Right answer. So, did you do? You, do you know about um, Sharp Saver, the grocery store chain, like the discount grocer? Yeah. Oh my goodness! I've only ever seen people do hauls in other videos from this store. There's one in Winchester, and we're going straight through that town, Leanne. I have uh -huh. I have to stop there on Saturday after the conference. That's fine. Oh, I, there's one in Belleville. <laughs> how close is that to where we're going? Oh, that's where my husband is right now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> now I'm going to show you what I picked up and canned and how I stored it. But y'all, as a homestead dreamer, I've been aware of the HOA conference for several years now. And this past year, I said, you know what? I'm going to go. And truly, it was for my own personal learning, not for footage or anything. I only took a couple of pics and maybe have three minutes of footage. Now, I attend a lot of conferences for work, both within my district and the state. So I have seen the full range of your really good conferences and the ones where you're like, Ooh. Um, but the HOA conference, I cannot praise it enough because it was so well run. Okay, so this is what HOA was kind of like for me. You know how you go into YouTube and then all your favorite channels appear and then you just like channel hop? Well, it's pretty much just like that, except it's in person. As you're just walking around the grounds, you're like, oh, there's Jessica from Roots and Refuge, or oh, hey, over there's the Stivers, or oh, Doug and Stacy. Like it is, it is 
wild, y'all. Becky from Acre Homestead. Like, I mean, just, everybody's just, they're just like there and I'm taking it in like, <gasps> wait, wait, what? And everyone's just mixing and mingling. And I remember when Leanne and I got out of my truck and Constance from It's a Good Life Farm and Anna from Fermented Homestead spotted us and ran like full force like towards us and as soon like they called our names and like we both look and we're like oh my goodness Constance Anna and like we just like they just ran up to us and hugged our necks and you know it just it felt like like that's how the vibe of the conference started and um you know these are relationships that I started just like with many of you here on YouTube but it just felt like I have known them for so much longer. There wasn't, I mean, that's the first time we ever met in person, but I just, and, and that's what it's like throughout the entire conference. And the difference between YouTube and the conference is that after the presentation, there's a Q&A period where you can actually get your question answered. And then if the session ends before, you know, you get a chance to ask it, every vendor had their own booth. So then later on, you could go and like have these conversations. And, you know, lives are absolutely great, but sometimes I'm not able to catch them. And so I'll do the replay or I don't know, sometimes like the chat just moves um, too fast. But like, at this conference, it's still the right size for it to feel large in terms of, I think there were five different tents and um, from like uh, early in the morning until I guess it was around 3.30 or 4, there were speakers that either had like 60 or 90 minute uh, sessions and so they would present. Um, and so you could just like, and the topics were just, I mean, sometimes it was hard to choose between them. And all of them were just so, so well done, but um, oh my goodness, it was just like, yeah, you've, you, you've got to go. And I met several friends here on the channel because I know at least that I was walking around, I was probably giving like others looks with my eyes like, oh my gosh, I know you. And so I thought I caught someone else's eye that was doing that same look um, to me. And so I just said to her, hey, how's the conference going? And then she like interrupted and was like, Cassandra. And I was like, hey girl. Like it was just, <laughs> it was just so great. Like, I don't know. Like you just, I, you find your tribe at the HOA conference. Right now you're watching me prepare sandwiches and snacks for the two-day HOA conference I recently attended. Once you get into a routine of cooking from home, it actually makes you a picky eater when you go out. And it irks me to overpay for food that uses questionable ingredients on road trips. Other than a cooler and an overnight bag, I didn't pack much, but I did score a brand new to me purse from the thrift store that was perfect for this trip. I'm the kind of gal that either uses a fanny pack or a small backpack because my purses need to have utility more than look pretty. This purse has a space for everything and even a line snack space to wipe down, so I was sold. And off to the conference I went. All right, so look who I picked up. Hey, <laughs> it's Leanne. Are you ready for this? I, I'm ready. All right, let's get going. Especially with my latte. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> she doesn't need caffeine. Like, I need it. I'm over here yawning like a lion. But, like, you're up and at him already. It, uh, Look, you're bright eyed and bushy tailed yeah, right now. Yeah, I'm also red eyed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see y'all soon. <laughs> On our way back home, we stopped at Sharp Shopper. Oh my gosh, for 48 ounces, this totally beats BJ's. Totally beats me, Jace. Beats Yeah. As I work towards keeping a stocked pantry, I do so bit by bit, which gives my budget time to purchase long-term storing equipment like Mylar bags and food-safe buckets along the way. I tucked wheat berries into the freezer and lightly baked my oatmeal, two techniques to kill off any bugs before long-term storing. The prices of many of the items I found were at least 30% or more off of what I'm used to seeing. I broke down my 25 pound bag of oatmeal into eight mylar bags using oxygen absorbers and a thrifted flat iron to seal. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all know I love fresh fennel to make my carrot and fennel soup, so when I found several bulbs, I grabbed them to freeze. I did the same with several packages of sausage links, breaking them down into meal-sized portions. Now while I'm not the biggest fan of canned ground beef, honey, I'll can sausage in a heartbeat. But I normally don't have more than a few jars of it because for the price I'm used to paying, I know I'm just going to use it within a few weeks so I just stick it in the freezer. But at $5 a log, honey, I've now got sausage on the shelf to last as long as I want it to. Canned crumbled sausage retains its chew and when reheated in a pan or microwave, you can't tell the difference between it and freshly cooked. I can't wait to have jars of this at the ready for omelets, casseroles, or a quick sausage gravy. Don't forget to save those beef drippings. It's a mild seasoning that's great to saute veggies or meat in. When I shared my first ever pantry tour here on the channel, so many of you were so sweet to my family and especially my mom. Those two crazy kiddos will be back up here next week, so you'll see them again soon. My mom and I are forever sending care packages back and forth. Maybe it's something at the thrift store that I found that I think she'll love or a pantry item that I've recently made or who knows what. She'll do the same for me, so here's a little bit of the banter that occurs between all of the cooking and canning that I do that I usually just edit out. Mom? Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm good. I got the package. Good. Here it is. A lot of the times the packages will just come in the house when Cam comes over to walk Thor. All right, we have some dish cloths here. These are great. These are really durable for being disposable. And then I put them in the washing you, machine. You put them in the dishwasher? The washing machine. Oh, the washer machine. Mm -hmm. Wow, cold cycle and then just air dry them, right? Yeah, air dry them. Oh my gosh, that is such a great idea. Grandma got you some treats, Boo Boo Bear. You guys keep him. Keep him. Oh my gosh, and dental sticks and more treats. Oh, oh, this is. <gasps> These are gorgeous, Mom. Oh my gosh. These are gorgeous. <gasps> oh wow you know I love my earrings you know I love my earrings oh my goodness where did you get these I've been here why, why are you holding out <laughs> why are you holding out I love these oh my gosh there's a necklace hold on what else do we have in here it says we'll get the one cup to you later what are these Oh, look at these fancy measuring cups. Snap and lock. Oh, mom, this is so me. <laughs> I love these. Of course, reusable utensils. I love that it comes in this container. And they sit together. Oh. Oh, they're like magnetic or something? No, it's. It's just the design? What happened to my scissors? Where'd you find these? Um, at Bells. We don't have a Bells in this area. Well, I feel like that they're more in Virginia. Yeah, I do like that store. Oh, excellent! <laughs> what, the pan scrapers? You know what? I have not, I have seen these. I had something else and I was like, this is not working, but let me, I will definitely let you know. Oh my goodness, you got me the matching pan? Oh, I had it. Oh, this is a clever idea to put the shower caps on it like this. I put them, I had, I had some footage and then I oiled it a little bit and then I said, yeah, it matches. Okay. I had too many dishes. Too many dishes, is that a thing? Don't forget to click the link to start getting canning and fermenting recipes delivered straight to your inbox. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends.